What most people might not realize is that there's a subsector of the mining sector, artisanal or small-scale mining, which actually is employing between 20 and 30 million men and women, mostly in developing countries around the world. And they're mining minerals that we're using, that are in our cell phones, that are in PlayStations and Xboxes and all of these things. The aspect of this sector that, that is, I think, most characteristic is the fact that the technologies are usually the crudest of the crude. So we're talking about people uh, using picks and shovels, wheelbarrows, manual hauling. You can imagine the environmental issues that come with it, and in particular, the health and safety issues. When I started research in Uganda, there was one case, Lake Katwe Salt Works, which is in western Uganda. Uh, it's located within Queen Elizabeth National Park. The park actually formed in the 50s, and all of the women that were engaged in farming lost their livelihood, and so were driven to the salt mines. During the process of salt production, women and men are immersed in salt water for several hours a day. And as a consequence, everyone in that village can recount their perceived impacts from salt mining in terms of fertility, damage to genitalia, uh, miscarriage. Uh, young girls who work in the salt lake have actually been stigmatized in terms of being considered marriage material. One suggested methodology was how the salt is processed. Do people need to actually be immersed within the salt water? And can these production pans be linked to do a sort of sequential extraction? You can potentially extract higher quality, higher purity salt that can be sold at a higher price. So the recommendations that emerged from the research really focused on how you can increase people's incomes and reduce the health and safety impacts. And so this is one of the outcomes that I'm proud of. Uh, from this research and I'm hoping it'll be taken a step forward by the university and other researchers to come.